Item 1, Member's Code of Conduct. Is there anyone with any pecuniary or other of interest in the plan? No one? Good. Then last meeting, as I've been here, Adam Redmond was to present the Royal Green. I'm sure I'm happy with the record. Please, please, Thank you.
we should decide how this money is spent. But very often we're being steered in a particular direction by Whitehall, but we are a better place to decide how it's spent. Well, indeed, nobody could argue with that, but if, that, if we are going to do that, we need to spend that money wisely. And I, for the life of me, couldn't see how this Hamilton Square project was spending money wisely. So it is for all of us to make sure that these schemes are, um, are viable, are going to produce a real benefit to the community. Now, um, one of the problems I think that, it, that is uh, involved in this sort of project is, um, and this isn't any new, but nevertheless uh, it will probably increase in the future, is that we are often asked to put in our projects as part of a, a bidding process with other local authorities and other local city region. And there's a great temptation for us to put four or five bids in on the basis that we put four or five bids in one of, you know, at least we might lose some, but at least we'll get something. There are times when we need to be brave. Alan, 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 Alan. All right, just look, you're very near it. You're all for five minutes, but you, we know about the bidding process and thing, Alan. Well, I just, okay, okay, all right. We're here I, to talk about Hampton Square. And it is. Well, it, it, it's, I just want to take it back. But well, that is that is about Hampton Square. But your time is up, Alan. The sport. Just let me just. I will. Thank you, Chair. Very kind. Keep it free. Um, I think the scoring system needs to be looked at. I think it's too easy to get 250 points. I think you should. One of the dangers in that, and this is where I will finish, is that if it's money that's coming in from an outside source, it gets a lot of points, and quite frankly, we should look at the intrinsic value of the scheme and not where the, the funding is important, of course it's it important, um, because we, we don't want to borrow money, but we shouldn't be actually looking at the, at the giving it a tick simply because it's getting outside funding. I think there's a role for constituency committees, they should have looked at this, and maybe they could have uh, decided that it wasn't it. Not to not have a veto over it, but at least to have commented on it. So I think there are a number of things. I agree, um, uh, the leader of the council has issued a press release today, of course, and what he said is probably right. We do need to look, come up with a better scheme, an overall scheme, and not small schemes such as this one, which clearly actually wasn't fit for the purpose for which it was intended. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Alan. So, as I said before, Alan spoke, it is academic, uh, Alan's remark, which I, I would suggest we just note to the least um, withdrawal of the scheme anyway, so if everybody's agreed, yeah, we'll just know that. Just a comment. Yeah, the mayor's and travel's been mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. It's so just, just a thread. Just a yeah, yeah. interest. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yes, of course. Thanks for that, Jeff. Yeah. Thank you. So we'll just note that and thank Alan for his remarks. Good evening. Thanks, Alan. Good evening. Thanks, everyone. We'll move on to uh, agenda item four, the devolution update and its role for the players and update on the And this is purely because I think it, it is important for us to keep abreast of the devolution issue because it's so fluid and it seems to be um, one, one day we get some information, the next day it's outdated and we're just running to keep up. Thanks for all
So Jeff is working with some proposals around them, um, which you'll bring forward in the next few weeks. But essentially what is said in the short term is that the previous arrangements that were in place to work up the devolution deal will stay for the short term until that AGO in June. Um, and then there will be a set of proposals from June to May next year for how the city region will work with a view from May 2017. Just to cover the world waters and um, just being able to. 
been implemented, and then some that are in the pipeline uh, for future development. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what Thanks. That's the question. The next one. Okay. <coughs> that brings us on to item four the creation of a property development framework. scheme, 
and who would be the end user, the likelihood of the end user um, going into administration, what would the council would do. So lots of research we need to do to, to cover that risk position. But it does actually, as it's a risk position, it give us a reward as well. So what we would expect is the term from taking that head risk position is potentially an income from the development. So it wouldn't just be the council taking the risk and that's it. But if it was to work and it was to be an end user, the end user within place for the next five years, we could expect a return from that as well, which would be useful even to the council. But you are taking on that risk and, and reward. In terms of applying this, we're looking at a number of schemes. We're working on uh, one scheme, particularly in Bromro, uh, where the business who was looking to locate, wanted to stay in the world, but there was no property around. One of the risks we've got is if the business wants to move into the area or grow in the area, we don't have a great deal of property. We have a lot of industrial property, which is pre-1930 stock and pre 1970s which is not just not fit for purpose for a modern day business use. So we've looked at um, taking a head lease on a new development, which would provide the developer the ability to invest, put their money in there, and the council comes in at that top position um, and provides the buffer between the developer and the, the end user, if you like. Um, that scheme didn't come to fruition because the business took a decision not to move in the end. What it did do is it actually tested the market. We understood what our risk is in that marketplace. We understood that if that end user was to go into administration, we were left with a property that we could subdivide that unit and understand if we subdivided it, what the demand is for that property. And Really, really get to grips with what the risk we're taking on. So that's the, the, in, in essence the, the, the council head lease. All of those tools, if you like, go together in a toolbox which will enable us and the council to respond to some opportunities moving forward. Now, can, a question from council which go around um, Peel Holdings. We are working with Peel and we have been for a number of years in order to redevelop the document. Peel still <coughs> face the same issues. So if they spend £10 million on the development, it'll only be worth £6 million at the end. They spend, um, I don't know, 18 pounds a square foot building in the office, for example, but it could only be leased out at 12 pounds a square foot. There is a six pounds a square foot gap, which will be appeal and a big um, development corporation. They are still the private sector looking to make a return. So it's about working appeal to see if we can use these tools to support appeal as well. What we have got within the enterprise zone is using the, the, the national policy initiative, is we've got the ability to reinvest the business rates. So we've seen two new developments in the enterprise
reasons why they decided to move from Birkenhead to Bromley for the international business. So now that we've cleared that area of Birkenhead, it makes it a lot more viable for them to be rather for moving out to Bromley. It does for that particular project we had really the land and the European Union in the rural world and vice so it's it's a life for life.
might be um, might be a weight for uh, what might be 12 pounds a square foot, but within four or five years, that would have to go up to 15, 16 pounds a square foot to make those subsequent phases viable. And that's what Peel are waiting for, really. They want to, you know, where we're working with Peel is you know, they're in it for the long run, so they will be looking to make money later on from a real estate point of view. But early in the, in the, in the regeneration proposals, such as Royal Water, we've really got to make that work and catalyze projects. So I think, fair point, but we are looking to part of this that if we intervened in, in a way that had our lines, there would have to be a strategy then for bringing in the values and, and we wouldn't just ask I'm just concerned that the rate that the market is made, you know, rentals at £12 are going to increase in 18 or 20 or 25 or 25. And that's, that's a leap in the dark, isn't it, in some situations? Well, when you bring together a critical mass of investment, for example, because we talk about one that hasn't been used meaningfully economically in 30, 40 years. So, it really is hard to, to make that cultural change as well. People thinking about as a business area, for example, like we're in professional business parts, but people do that. So I think the same for the Docklands, where if you didn't intervene in that way, you'd have to have you know, that understanding in the marketplace that those subsequent schemes would be more viable as they come forward. So it's a transition. It wouldn't be overnight suddenly you're getting £20 a square foot, but it would be a transition over a period of time. But that's the type of regenerative scheme it is, that you know, it is a 20 year scheme, and we hope that once the market picks up, we build that quickly. You see those bigger schemes coming forward as well. But we've really got to catalyze those, those initial stages, really. And the point was made, I think I'm not sure if you've made it, but the infrastructure side as well, you need to invest in that infrastructure in order to regenerate an area. Exactly, if it catalyzes as much as it yeah. Yeah. wouldn't to get the right. so, so, yeah. Absolutely. So it would be this tool used alongside maybe an investment in a road or investment in something else, but really just catalyze an area in regeneration terms. That's what we're trying to achieve. Not just Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, obviously the International Business Park in Bromley Ward is in that patch. Um, I mean, I'm very aware of that particular plan. that have been there for at least 14 years since I've been a council of that one there. Um, and some of the direct plan have been there for donkeys. And whilst it's been marketed and marketed and marketed, um, nobody bites it the bullet. Um, I, I, I am a bit concerned on the Council Elderton um, view here about, you know, and I mentioned the 10 million pounds and you could only sell it for six. But there is a, an extreme risk for this authority to throw 4 million quid there, 4 million quid there, 3 million quid there. I am very aware there is property in the business park <coughs> that is. <coughs> empty for years. I have been to planning committee and argued for changing views from B1, B2, B8 uh, to D2 leisure. Um, and we now have thriving businesses providing jobs 
in the, in the bowl, in the taekwondo centre, and in the, in the football uh, indoor arena. Now, I, I do feel that we, we are being a bit precious about the business park. And I think we actually do need to look at are people actually going to use it? Because the example that was given was somebody who wanted to move from Birkenhead to Bromborough and didn't. Because we gave them the plan to stay where they were. So I, th I think we need to work on how we are going to market uh, these buildings and sites. Some of which are absolutely disgusting, frankly. Um, kids do mountain biking on them. There's loads of adults that do scrambling all over these places, and the police are chasing their tails over it, and it causes annoyance, and then we get all the litter of dumping as well because we don't get excited. And I just think it, it is a great concern that we have land there totally underused and hasn't been used in some cases for 20 years. But we're saying, oh no, well, if you if you put 10 million in. I'm just very concerned about the risk that the council is taking by funding uh, things like this. And, and a liquidation vote was mentioned, but when it comes down to it, many members around this room will never what happens with liquidation. You never get a penny back. It takes forever to get the money.